One year stolen. His story should be here. That's the headline on the front page of today's Wall Street Journal about its reporter, Evan Gerskovich. He remains in a Russian prison after being arrested last March on espionage charges that he, the journal, the U.S. government all say are bogus. As the Wall Street Journal writes, his crime in Vladimir Putin's world, his crime is journalism. Gershkovich is one of 520 journalists imprisoned worldwide. And according to the Society to Protect Journalists, 22 have been killed already this year. All of them, like Evan, with devastated family, friends, colleagues left behind. Here with me now is NBC News Chief International Correspondent Keir Simmons. Sam Silverman is a close personal friend of Evan Gerskovich. Uh, Keir, let's set the stage if we can, because um, Evan was in uh, Russia. We saw him in a courtroom mm -hmm. just on Tuesday, I think it was. What's the latest we know about his situation? Well, he's held on pretrial detention, which effectively means that um, it's appalling. He can be held for almost indefinitely. Uh, <clears throat> according to the Russians, they're still investigating effectively. He's not on trial right now. There's, there's no trial uh, that has uh, started. And these hearings are... Uh, about asking just at, at least that he can be released, uh, that he doesn't have to be held in the Fortifo prison in Moscow, which is his former KGB prison. A chilling place uh, to have to be, despite the seeing Evan and seeing how strong he appears to be when he's in court. Listen, NBC News continues to report from Russia. We have a great team in Moscow who just this week tried to get access to that hearing that was held. Uh, the media were told that they couldn't they couldn't get that kind of access. Um, we still don't actually know the details of the accusations against him beyond the fact uh, that it is apparently espionage, which, as you say, is absolutely denied by the Wall Street Journal and by the U.S. government. Sam, that, it, it, I, a lot to unpack there that I want to talk to you about, but I have not stopped thinking about something you said to me at the 100-day mark the last time you were on this program, which was that for those of you who are able to be in touch at times with Evan, he is the one providing the strength and support, not the other way around. Um, I, I know you have to be careful about the things you say about your interactions with him, but is that still true? How is he holding up and how does he hold up? Yes, it's still very much true. I mean, Evan, by all accounts, is OK, but he's working very hard to be OK. He's in a routine of meditating and reading and writing and journaling and doing whatever he can to keep himself in a good headspace. And through communication via letters that are going in and out, it seems that he's still got his great sense of humor and still reassuring his family, his friends, and uh, teasing us. And, you know, it's clearly a very difficult situation, but he's making the absolute best of it that he can. Any of us who continue to read his writing uh, during the time that he was able to write for the Wall Street Journal know that he is a very gifted journalist. What kind of friend is he? What do you want people to know about him? Because in this world, when so many people are held, it's important to talk about what is lost to his family, to his friends, to the world. Yeah, I mean, he's a great friend for so many different social groups. I mean, what's painful about this one year mark is it causes us to reflect on everything he's missed in the past year. He's missed seven weddings, two of which he should have been the best man at. Um, and to just think about him not partaking in those birthdays and celebrations and everything is so tough, especially because he's made such a wide network of friends through his personal and professional life. You have been, Keir, um, on assignment in Russia over, over many months now, but yeah. there's been pressure on independent news outlets um, who are able to report from Russia. So based on your unique insight, for those who are not able to report from there mm. or who, frankly, understandably, they or their companies are nervous about allowing them even limited reporting from there, what's being lost? That's a great question. Look, I, I think the Wall Street Journal, in an article today, did a, a, a really impressive job of mentioning all the other people who are mm. being held, including a number of other uh, Americans. So it's important to keep that in mind. Also, the, the pretext of your question, um, the pressure on uh, Russian journalists, domestic journalists, is, has been enormous, and they, they've been crushed in, in many ways. So that, well, not in many ways, and frankly, they have been crushed. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's, that's another part of the context. Listen, it's not great, frankly. Uh, in Russia, there is many, many Russians buy into the revisionist history that President Putin 
uh, talks about and the people around him talk about. Uh, the economy is become, becoming more militaristic. And so I think we, while of course we are focused on um, President Putin, uh, we, we, it's worth remembering that there is a, there have been some cultural changes, some social changes there, um, some economic changes that are genuinely uh, threatening. And, and I think that's going to be with us um, for the rest of it's a generational change. It's going to be with us for a long time. Remember, uh, President Putin, who, who just won uh, his so-called election, uh, is likely to be in power for another 12 years. And even then, after, if, if and when he is replaced, uh, then that is, it's hard to imagine that's going to be somebody who isn't still kind of in step with that same shift in Russia. And that's the real challenge uh, that the West and, and uh, whatever administration is in Washington um, faces in the years to come. And Sam, I know you understand that reality, but do you let yourself go to the place of the day he would be released? I think about it. I mean, we're looking forward, as I mentioned last time, to throwing him a big party, and uh, we're still in the planning stages for that, and we really hope that it's sooner rather than later. But, uh, you know, every day it does get tougher and tougher. Well, we look forward to um, having you come back and talk about that party and seeing Evan come home. Uh, but again, understand the difficulties that everyone faces in the world of journalism and authoritarian regimes in this point in time. Sam, thank you. Kira, it's good to have you here. Much appreciated. And we, we appreciate your work. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.